Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschenweht and we are having another interview. I'm sitting here with Grandmaster Falko Bintrich from Germany. He's one of the top ranked players in Germany. He also holds the record for becoming the youngest ever Grandmaster in Germany at the age of 16. Besides that, he is also the founder and co-founder and CEO of the amateur chess organization Short ACO and we'll sh surely talk about this later on. Falco, thank you so much for making the time for the interview today. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing very well. The weather is nice and we're playing chess in a few hours. So everything you can hope for. <laughs> everything you can hope for indeed. We're at the Bangkok Chess Club Open here in Thailand. The first round will be in a few hours, but right now we'll have a little chat. And let's start off with, for those people who don't know you, could you maybe quickly go over when you started your chess career, I guess, when you learned chess, who yeah. taught you, and when you achieved your different titles, and also what you're doing right now. Yeah, I started uh, playing chess at the age of six. I was taught by my, by my dad at first, mm -hmm. and um, then I had some, some coaches who helped me, and I, yeah, I reached the FIDE Master title at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. An international master at 15 and grandmaster at 16. Yeah, that went pretty <laughs> yeah, quickly. <laughs> pretty quickly, and yeah, at the moment I'm also focusing on pursuing my chess career further on. And um, yeah, I'm also CEO of the Amateur Chess Organization, which is um, promoting amateur chess globally by organizing tournaments, championships. Yeah, that is what I do. Sounds good. Sounds good. So. On my channel, I'm all about how can I help people improve their chess. So what I'm really curious about, since you became so strong so early on, how did you do it? What was your training regimen like? Um, what do you think contributed the most to your success so early on? Yeah, I, I think the most important thing is that you train regularly. Um, what I did was I had a, a regimen of, of 20 hours uh, per week, mm -hmm. three hours per day approximately and I did it very consistently over the years. So, uh, of course, you can, you can do much more. You can do five or six or eight hours a day, but this is very um, difficult to sustain over a longer period of time. And I think if you, if you do three hours a day every day, um, this is quite sufficient. And, yeah, what I, what I also did is um, I was trying to have a very balanced training regimen. I did uh, 30 minutes of tactics, tactical exercises every day. I mean, really every single day. Even every on, single day. Yeah, even holidays or I don't know, Christmas, um, uh -huh. my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> every day, and this this keeps you very fresh in your mind. You're very, your very your tactical sharpness uh -huh. is always there. And I also did a lot of openings, of course, and end games. You have to train all aspects of the game if, yes. you wanna be, if you wanna be strong, to be strong in all aspects of the game. And of course, my coaches helped me a lot. It's, it's the, I think it's the best way to improve in chess is to have a, a good coach. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to analyze your own games. Also, it's important to analyze really every single game mm -hmm. because even if you win, if you drew, there's still a lot of mistakes in almost any game, Pretty much, yeah. uh, even at the highest level. So. Yeah, that's very important. So, how did you how did you go about analyzing your games? Yeah, first uh, you should look at you can look at your games uh, individually on your own without an engine, mm -hmm. and to find the moments in the game where you think um, you went wrong, and then you can turn on the engine or ask your coach, um, yeah, to analyze it uh, further. But right. the first first step should be analyzing your game on your own. Right, and that's a really important point because I know most people, after the game, they turn on the engine, look over it with the engine, but really there's no learning effect. Yeah, yeah the, mo the, the most important thing is to, to improve continually and uh, to do this you have to learn. And uh, you don't learn anything if you, if you turn on the engine immediately because the engine doesn't explain to you why uh, you should do that or you should do another move. Right, and it doesn't give you a reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no explanation. Exactly. That, that's so crucial. You want to figure out why you went wrong and, and how you could have done better. So, let me ask you, what's your 
training regimen like today? What are you, if you're working on chess, what are you working on? Where do you focus your time? Uh, mostly on openings, mm -hmm. but I know that's not the best way I should, <laughs> I should admit. Um, in the past uh, few weeks or months, I'm trying to get back to my old regimen again, okay. do more tactics again, and um, solving some studies or compositions, and um, also end games. Because um, once you reach a certain level, you think all that matters is openings, right. but um, that's just not the case. Mm. Um, concentration is very important, um, being physically fit is very important. Mm. Um, and that's a topic that is often not talked about, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even even though we are we are both young, I sometimes have the feeling that after three, four, or five hours, it gets really tough to keep up your your level of concentration, and uh, that's why your physical your physical fitness very important as well. Yeah, absolutely agree. And it's really something people don't discuss. You 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 know you think chess, oh, it's all in your head, but. If you sit there for five, six hours, you really will feel it if you are physically fit or not. All right, so there are some people on my channel who are just starting out pretty much. Yeah. And they're like overwhelmed. They, they could go in all different directions. And what would you advise somebody who's pretty much just learned the rules, maybe went to a chess club a few times, where, where should they focus their time first? I get this question asked a lot. <laughs> Me too, that's why I actually yeah. asked to you. <laughs> and I always answer it um, the same way. I think the, the easiest way to, to improve uh, as, a, as a beginner is to do tactics. Right. Tactical exercises because tactics are like the, 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 your primary tool in, in chess. If you, if you cannot calculate correctly, it's very difficult to execute any strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in, in very positional to have a high positional understanding if you can't execute it. And for this execution you need uh, tactics. And I think the, the best way to improve as a beginner is to buy a few um, yeah, books on tactics and just go through all of those exercises. And if you do this on a consistent basis, like, I don't know, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. However much yeah, you can afford, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if it's like only five minutes a day, um, if you do only one or two exercises, it, it keeps your mind going, your, your, yeah, your abilities uh, improve, and I think that's the, that's the easiest way. And it's very uh, easy to measure, it's also a good point, you can just measure, are you right or are you wrong, mm. did you find a move or didn't you? And um, that's, that's what I think is the easiest way to improve. Okay, yeah, that's a good tip. And I also like to say, tactics is really the foundation, you build yeah. everything on top of that. So, let me ask you this, looking back at your chess career, is there anything you, you wish you would have done more of? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> more? I think I would have played, um, I should have played um, against stronger opponents more regularly. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's, that's overlooked in a lot of right. uh, chess careers. Of, of young players, they they keep playing at a certain level they're comfortable at, mm -hmm. and um, but you should always strive for more. Right. And I think I should have done that uh, even more. Yeah, it's also something my coach liked to say. One of the most important things is is to play against strong opposition as much as you can, because there's nothing better than to face somebody strong and yeah. learn from them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, here's another question, which I also get asked a lot, so I'm going to uh, give it to you. What are your three most recommended books oh. that uh, either you have recommended a lot to, to other people or that have helped you a lot in your chess development? I think um, Tvoretsky's Endgame uh, Manual mm -hmm. is a very good book, maybe the best book on Endgames, and then on tactics, there's a book by, I think he's called Bloch. Yeah, uh, I, I did that too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a Russian, it's a Russian book, but it doesn't matter because um, it's the, the diagrams. Language, yeah, it's, it's just diagram positions and you solve them. And the third book, it's like five thousand. What, what is it? No, it's no, a lot of tactics. Right? I, I don't think well, it's five thousand. Maybe. But the good thing is they are, they have some categories, so mm -hmm. you can you can go uh, through each category. Yeah, then there's. I don't know, 
Maybe the book by Polga on middle game is pretty good. By, by which Polga? No, the the, the, the father. Oh, the, the, the Laszlo. Laszlo, yeah. Laszlo Polga. He has there's this, this big tactics book. Uh -huh. I don't know. Too thousands, many. Yeah. thousands of exercises, which is also very good. Uh -huh. But I think um, he, there's a, there's he has three books. I think tactics, middle games, and end games. And I think one of the best is the middle games. Ah, okay, uh, interesting. Yeah, edition because those exercises are really hard, but yeah, you learn a lot. Yeah, I like that. And you, you've kind of covered different aspects of the game. You yes. say end game, the red ski, tactics, block, and then middle game, polgar. So those are some great recommendations. And as always, you can find all the books and all the other resources that we mentioned in this video in the description. All right, now I would like to shift gears a little bit and talk about tournaments, which yeah. fits because we are at the tournament right now. So. Let's say you haven't played chess for a while and you are preparing for a tournament. How do you get in shape? Um, I would look at recent games in my, um, in my openings mm -hmm. and I would just play through recent games on the board. Just to, just to have, have, an, uh, have your laptop or your computer that shows the games and then just go through the games uh, at, at a chess board. Not to have all, all the games only on the on the screen mm -hmm. because I think it's important to have, to um, do chess training over the board mm -hmm. and again tactics. I think if you if you haven't been playing for a while to get in shape in, in shape again, I think it's the, the easiest way is to do what you're doing at the tournament, right. do moves over the board, mm -hmm. and um, do some tactics again. Yeah, I really like this recommendation to, to kind of get a feel again for yeah. sitting at a chessboard. Because if you haven't played for a few months and you get back to a chessboard, it feels a little bit off. Yeah. Like it's a little You're bit, a little bit strange. strange. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's, I think, a really good tip that I'll surely employ myself to, to get back into this mood, yeah. uh, sitting at a board and, and what it's like. Okay, so then Let's talk about when you are at the tournament. Do you have any practices or maybe rituals that you do to be successful during the tournament? Yeah, I think um, sleep is mm -hmm. very important. Um, you can't play chess if you haven't slept well. Right. And um, I think that for me personally, that's the most important. Most important. Yeah. Okay. Then, regarding yeah nutrition, mm -hmm. you shouldn't eat like junk food. Mm -hmm. Not good. <laughs> I mean, that's that's clear. I think. Right. And, um, and also maybe not. Yeah. Say again. Because it drains your energy, mm -hmm. and you have to you have to sustain your level of energy for a few hours. And um, right. Yeah. So so sleep, nutrition. Yeah. What I want to say with nutrition actually um, is that probably not eating too too soon before the yeah. game because yeah. then all the blood <laughs> goes into your stomach because yeah. you're busy with digestion and. You know, That's true. You're, you're tired and uh, you can't really f concentrate that well. So that's, I think yeah. that's a good point. Also regarding preparation, mm -hmm. um, I think you shouldn't do more than I don't know, 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Uh -huh. I think 90 minutes is already a little too much. Right. And I think maybe 30 to 60 minutes is, is perfect. Because most of your work should be done at home, mm -hmm. not uh, before the round. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think for me, at least personally, it's more important to preserve your energy for the game and not to waste it before it. Right. And that's actually exactly what Sebastian Bogner said as well, that it doesn't make sense to focus so much energy on the preparation and then, who knows, your opponent plays something completely different and you're already tired from all the preparing and you're not that fresh at the board so I think a good good point to not yeah over prepare because it might not really benefit you that much yeah right. yeah regarding preparation another point uh, is it's more about choosing yeah it's not about preparing if you, if you have if you still have to prepare a specific opening before the round yeah. You've already done something wrong. No, you need yeah. to have everything done yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is not easy. Yeah. But that this, is the the yeah. this is the optimum. Uh -huh. And then it's just about choosing which line you'll play. And this preserves a lot of energy. But of course, it's not that easy to do all, those, all, those, all this work before the tournament. Right? Right. Absolutely. Okay, we will do a very short break and then we'll be right back in a moment. All right, and welcome back. Still sitting here with 
Mr. Falkumentary. And we were just talking about tournaments and actually a question that I really like to ask and I know it's, um, I've talked uh, to Falco about this before, is how do you deal with losses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. Some, it depends on how, how you lose. Right, yeah. that's important. Yeah. yeah, if you lose in a very bad way, meaning that you had a winning position at first and then you lose, that's very hard. It is very hard. That's yeah. very hard. But if you lose, um, I don't know, to a much stronger opponent, and you you have the feeling that it was just fair in uh -huh. some way, mm -hmm. it's easier, I think. Um, Even though it's also not a nice yeah, feeling, right? Yeah, it's not a nice. It's never a nice <laughs> feeling to lose the game, of course. Um, yeah. But in general, I think for me personally, it's very hard to get back on my feet after a loss. I think that's something I have to work on. So maybe I'm not the best person to answer this question. And. Um, I think it's, for me it's very hard. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's also a common common thing among strong chess players that they really hate losing. Yeah. And there is this ambition to not lose yeah. and to avoid it at all costs. But yeah, I'm, I'm just curious how you get back after a loss and focus on the next game. If you have any strategies there, or you just I don't okay. have any strategies. Okay. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but maybe it's just you know you don't have you don't want to think about it that that it's a possible outcome of the game yeah. mm -hmm. and that's why you don't have any strategies for it. So yeah, maybe maybe it's a good thing that we <laughs> we do this interview so I can think about uh, yeah. Yeah, I personally also don't have any strategy. Honestly, I just feel like okay, next game is coming. Yeah, but what can you do? Yeah, it's, it's not that easy. Even no, it's not that easy. If you lose very in a very bad way. You have a winning position, or you had you had the feeling that you outplayed your opponent, mm -hmm. and then maybe you overlooked some tactical trick, or mm -hmm. you missed something in the end game, and you you the the, the 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 result is just the opposite of what you expected. Yeah, that's very difficult. It is. It is a difficult topic. Yeah, sometimes even even a draw is very difficult. Um, Really? Yeah, because if you have a winning position mm -hmm. in, in an, you, you work for five or six hours mm -hmm. and then you made a small mistake, or a big one in that <laughs> case, yeah, and um, the whole result changes, that's, that's very yeah, unpleasant. It is, yeah, absolutely. Alright, we're going to shift gears again a little bit. I received a question from one of my supporters through Patreon, uh, Karol Lala, and he is asking you, what are your ambitions and goals for the future? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carol is asking this question, okay. Uh, my ambition is generally to improve. And um, I think reaching, let's say, the top 100 uh, in, the, in the world rankings mm -hmm. would be a nice step. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I do have the feeling that I've not uh, reached my full potential yet. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but I, I don't like setting a very specific goal in terms of rating. Maybe I should do it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But a number alone isn't, it's a very external motivation. And I like to motivate, motivate myself just uh, by, by the pleasure of playing chess. Yeah. And at, at the moment I'm trying to get back this pleasure. Because if you work a lot of your, on, on your only on openings or like technical aspects of the game, it might happen that your pleasure uh, of purely playing the game isn't that high. Okay. And so my my main goal at, at this point in my career is to get back this pleasure. And um, yeah, I think this will also help me improve in, in terms of rating points. Okay. It's a good answer. Get back to well, what we all start with yeah, enjoying yeah, the game, yeah. and it's often forgotten. We you know. We think about elo points or think about money, yeah. but that's not really why we play it in the first place. Yeah, that those are external things and they do make you happy, of right. course, but uh, very on only for a short period of time. Yeah, you, once I reached, for example, 2600, it was a nice feeling, mm -hmm. but I, I also felt it doesn't change anything. Mm. And it's not like the world is a brighter place. <laughs> <laughs> Or something. It's just. It's just a number. Yeah. It is a number. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Now I have some kind of rapid fire questions. Pretty yeah. quickly. So we'll start off. I'm just things I'm curious about. What is 
your favorite game that you've played? Favorite game? The best game, most beautiful game, whatever you want. Oh, that's very play. difficult. It's not, a, not an easy <laughs> It's not so easy to answer. Are there too many to choose from or...? <laughs> no, I haven't thought about it actually. Really? No. Okay. Best game? I think for me the most important game was the one I won uh, at, the, at the European Championship in 2007 against um, Godena. Mm -hmm. um, which, because that made me a grandmaster. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. I won that game and I went home. Um, and I didn't realize that it, this meant that I, I made the, the, the final norm. Oh, that's that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, maybe it, it was good that I didn't know it before yeah. the game. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's that's the most important game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll link this up. You can check it out. That is Bintrich against Godena. Godena, yeah. From 2007 European Championship. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So maybe maybe this question is easier then. What is your favorite game overall of uh, all you've seen? Maybe not. <laughs> I'm not that much into, you know, labeling a game as uh -huh. the best. Uh -huh. or yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, because what is the best? Very, yeah, it's it's subjective, so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But even then, it's not so easy to answer. I think Magnus Carlsen plays a lot of very beautiful games, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to choose from. And um, yeah, maybe the game Anand versus Carlsen and the in the, in the World Championship match, where uh, Magnus won the, the Rook end game. Mm -hmm. it, it was, With the black pieces? Yeah. yeah. In the Royal Opus? Exactly, exactly. Because, yeah, you wouldn't expect a player like Anand to lose a game, mm -hmm. or lose, lose a position like that. And, I, and I, like, I like games like that, where there's players of equal strength, mm -hmm. nominally, and you have an equal position. And then one of the players just outplays the other. Right. Yeah. And that's what Magnus is very good at. Yeah. Yeah, we'll also link that up in the description if you want to check that out. I might even have analyzed on my channel, but only in German. Anyways, let's get to the next question, which is if you had 100 euro to spend on mm -hmm. chess, and let's say you're kind of starting out, uh, where would you spend it? Maybe <laughs> I would just buy the three books I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe just buy one book and and book one hour with the chess coach to have like both both sides to have a book you can work on your own mm -hmm. and you have a coach who just goes through your games through your recent games and tells you those are your weaknesses those are your your strengths this is what you can work on yeah I yeah, think that's... having someone external mm -hmm. ev evaluating your game. It's very important. Yeah, I think so too. To get this feedback. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we are reaching the end of the interview. Let me ask you one more question, which we, which I like to ask everybody. If people just take away one thing from this interview in terms of working on their chess, what should they take away? One tip. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I'm repeating myself, I think. Um, Training your tactical abilities mm. is the most important and mm. basic thing in chess. Mm. And exact, exactly what Sebastian Buchner said as well. Yeah. And I can absolutely support that. All right. Thank you so much for making the time. If people want to learn more about the ACO Metro Chess Organization and tournaments you're organizing yeah. there, where can we send them? Yeah. You you can just uh, go to our website, uh, it's uh, amateurchess.com. Mm -hmm. and there you can find you can, it in the description. There you can find any information. Okay, is there anything else you would like us to send people? Uh, no, that's it actually. Okay, yeah. Yeah. awesome. All right, again, thank you for making the time. This was Mr. Falco Bintrich. I hope you guys learned a lot from this interview and see you very soon. Bye bye. Right.